Hi, everybody, and welcome to the talkies. <laughs> Three filmmakers talking about movies. I'm Kenny. He's Kenny. Thank you. He <laughs> is Kenny. Wow, with such validation. <laughs> wow, thanks. thanks. Uh, I'm D. He is D. Thank you. I won't validate that. Oh. He, <laughs> I'm Taylor. Thank you. Cool. I think. Yeah, who knows? I mean, can you really prove anything? No. Can you know anything? No, I'm not going to try. Well, I'll tell you what I know, and that's we watched Nightmare Alley. Did we? Well, I, I did. didn't. <laughs> well, then we're in trouble. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> I did. You like did? months ago. Yeah. Did you I work? watched it hours ago. Oh, so God. I watched it when it first came out and hours ago. Yeah. Actually, All right. minutes ago. Guillermo. Just, Guillermo. Uh, just months ago for me. Guillermo just months ago. Toro. <laughs> uh, so, I, uh... I I thought about reading the uh, plot on Wikipedia. Yeah, you literally just got off the what a two hour drive. So yeah, I, I just sorry. I'll we'll refresh your memory. I remember it really well. Okay, so. we're fine then. Oh, we're good. Yeah, don't worry That's about it. it. Great. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, we watched Nightmare Alley uh, from Guillermo del Toro. We also covered um, Shape of Water when it came out. So this is our second time. Yeah. That's, and uh, that's in our, oh wait, that's right. Pacific Rim Part Two. That's not which is him. a Guillermo um, like spirit sequel. <laughs> it's not. No. Oh we, no. yeah, we it's never a, covered a sequel, Pacific but, Rim. Yeah. yeah. That's time. not a Guillermo movie. That's one of obviously. the worst episodes ever. That one's yeah. That movie sucks. Too. We didn't really talk about the movie much in that episode. We talked about tropes. It was yeah, tropes. And the cliches. Uh, yeah. We started the entire. We started the episode. We just listed with every cliche we could. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. We had a conversation was, of tropes. That was kind of funny. Yeah. We're <laughs> digressing hardcore. We only we just started. per usual. It's, it's oh a boring gosh. movie. What were you gonna? This was okay. Oh. Hot take. <laughs> hot take. <laughs> my hot take is this was not a boring movie. <laughs> uh, uh, my hot take is that. Uh, this is a movie I've been hoping to see for a long time. Yeah. Hoping to see? I agree. Yeah, a movie that was, like, good. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> like, like <laughs> Just, like, top to bottom, well made, and dark, and gritty, yeah. and real, and beautiful. Yeah. Like, I haven't seen one of them yeah. in a while. It's, like, straightforward <laughs> in its goodness. Yes. Yes. Straightforward. That's my hot take. Go. Uh, my hot take is that this is a, a, a very good movie. I liked it a lot. Um, it is like, I think I, I would use that term straightforward in goodness. Like it's, it's not, it didn't blow my mind the way like Ship Water did, but it certainly was not mediocre by yeah. any means. Yes. It was a very good movie and tells a really good story. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't like hold your hand or anything like that. And it's a good, good to shite. Yeah, e. it's definitely up there with Pan's Labyrinth and yeah, it better Shape of Water. than better than Crimson Peak. Yes. Um, yep. Yep. Yeah, and it's up there. Was one of his better movies. Good entry into his filmography, For in my sure. opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing to be ashamed about there. Um, I liked it a lot. <laughs> you son of a bitch! I really like this movie a lot. Um, it's like I didn't think about it until later after I saw it in the theaters, and I was like. Oh, this is like straight up film noir. Oh yeah, the yeah. other film noir that I felt really in love is with yeah was uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Yeah, but that one, uh, I don't know. They're both on this. I don't know. They're both really damn good genre movies. I really like this movie. What, yeah. What took me off guard is how dark as fuck this movie is. Noir as fuck. You mean? Like, well, I, I just they like Guillermo usually has some like sentimentality to him <laughs> right like he has he definitely has a sentimental side and even pan's labyrinth which is really dark had that um childhood innocence the imagination right this movie was just dark <laughs> and it's pretty uh yeah. cynical very cynical well. very bleak cynical, yeah the protagonist is a bad human. Yeah. Very bad. Yeah. yeah. And I never shit. like really rooted for him the way I did like Walter White. Sure. You know? Yeah. It's just like, oh, he's he's, <laughs> he's a bad a, guy. A, yeah, just a bad dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just about the bad deeds. Just gonna that he watch does. him d- descend. Yeah. <laughs> and he gets that's, his come up come up and Yeah. That's what I like about uh this genre. So the the film noir genre is about um not not just dark visuals, but also dark characteristics where uh, right. no one in the in the world is doing anything right. Everything is for their own selfish needs. Yeah. 
Um, Sin City. Flawed. Yeah, Sin City. Flawed right. individuals. Exactly. Yeah, flawed individuals. Yeah, so just like, I love that so much. And, and uh, I don't know why <laughs> we have this, all three of us have this kind of draw toward, uh, not narcissism. What's the word I'm thinking of? Nihilism? Yeah, nihilism. Yeah, that nihilism. Mm-hmm. Nihilum. Nihilum. That one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah. Life has no inherent meaning. Oh. Good point. I wanted to Thank watch you. this movie when it re-released in theaters as, uh, what was it called? A t- uh, something about a tale of lightness and dark or something like that. Light hmm? and dark. It was a black and white version. Really? Oh, cool. Yeah, and I really wanted to see it, and I didn't get to, and I'm so sad. <laughs> that, that would be really it's interesting. On, yeah, that would be cool. It's not in... Except... The coloring of this movie is so freaking good. It's right? great. Yeah. That I'd but, be sad to. Yeah, it's clearly this, not the originally intended way. It's like, this is fun. Well, so what's interesting about, about this way. is that Guillermo himself, when he would when he watched it, uh, he would watch some parts in black and white just, just to see what it would look like. And he ended up watching most of his dailies in black and white. Uh-huh. And he found out that because of the way they lit the scenes, uh, they're trying to capture that noir look. So a lot of the skin tones that they have are very bright when it comes to close-ups and stuff. So it gives off almost the same kind of values that they do back in the yeah. old noir films. Huh. And so the colorist went in and, by Guillermo's demand, uh, recolored the entire movie, specifically for black and white, uh, and then released two versions. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, That's I, awesome. I, I, wow. wanted to see, I wanted to see the black and white one. I do too, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, because this movie, like... I saw it's it's labeled as like a neo noir, but I don't really think it is. I think it's just a regular ass noir movie because well, yeah, it, it's it, not in the future. It's, it's in even, the right it's period. It's in the time period yeah. where most noir was and it, based it originally. Feels, it has yeah. more in common with like um, Maltese Falcon, yeah, than it does like Blade Runner. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure, yeah. Steph, yeah, for sure. Even Blade Runner has like some parts of a. Well, actually, I guess not the first one. I was just thinking the second Blade Runner has a lot has some uh, optimistic notes in it, but the first Blade Runner is pretty nihilistic. Yeah, that that one has pretty pretty like, dark notes. Yeah, Harrison like Harrison Ford's character. Depending on what cut you watch, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. His character so in that movie. Yeah, like he he he's just a bad person at the end. I mean, yeah, I'll, depending on the cut, I guess. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's talk about this movie. Let's. Uh, it was cool to see Ron Perlman play oh, yeah. a character without makeup. Yeah, just regular yeah. ass role. It's like, look, Ron there's Perlman. his face. <laughs> yeah, you know, and he was good too. He was great. Man, yeah. he's freaking huge. I he's loved a, that. The, yeah, guy. <laughs> that he paired him with the uh, with the little yeah guy. So yeah, yeah. The, you know what theme kind of caught me off guard in this movie? I didn't expect the it noir to be, aspect. The, yeah, the <laughs> noir. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the the kind of through line of. Um, like con artists and scammers and and how uh how it's a bad thing and how people can be uh um people can be uh what's it misled Naive yeah people misled, yeah people can be um yeah taken well, advantage of and the parallel they ended up drawing between the con artist and the therapist yeah how was that that was interesting that was yeah. really interesting. that was interesting yeah. yeah there's a lot of different themes in this movie yeah i felt like uh, to me, it was like the one of, I forget what they called it, something about eyes, but it but it had to, it was uh, what it meant when you started to believe in your own magic. Oh yeah, oh, and, uh-huh. and you you know it goes to your head yeah. and you become something evil. Shut eye, shut mm-hmm. eye. I think that's, that's what, the, what he said. That's yeah. what the dude said. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pete. It was like almost like a. Uh, I loved Pete. Pete yeah. was like one of my favorite. Pete's great. <laughs> a pro <laughs> yeah, rational great thought. What's that? Pro. This movie is pro rational thought. Uh, yeah, that's what it. Yeah, that's and the fu- kind of what funny I enough, take from it. It's about it. people like trying to trick people. Exactly. With, with it's like a cautionary tale in that <laughs> yeah. respect, yeah. maybe. Interesting. Yeah. Well, like like the way he manipulates the sheriff when they come to shut down, right? Yeah. You know, that that was like just just right in your face. Let's lie to authority uh-huh. and watch how humans just just eat it up. Yeah, like humans, humans will go for emotion and comfort over reason and logic, like yeah. every time. Yeah, yeah. I I felt really bad for Rooney Mara's character. Yeah, 
because of how shit he was to her in the yeah. end. I was like so how sad disingenuous that she didn't, was. I was rooting for her to get on that bus. Uh-huh. I'm like, oh, good, she's leaving. Thank goodness she's not going to do that thing. And then she, he talks her into staying. I'm like, oh, no. This is, gonna <laughs> this is be not going to work out right. I, I was certain she was going to die. So at least... At least she didn't get killed. Yeah. I like how he run at the end, like he runs that guy over. Yes. Yeah. Like now that the, didn't, that didn't even need to happen. Yeah. The violence in this was so well done. He always does good violence. Yeah. 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 And he's got a thing for bashing in noses. He's got a couple <laughs> specific things. I, I heard an interview where he talked about how when he was like a teenager or a kid or something, he, he fell on a fence, like a, like a spiked one. And it like pierced his ass, like oh my like God. through his ass. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And that experience stuck with him. <laughs> really? Yeah. That stuck with him. Oh man. And so, kind of a pun, man. What a pun there. Stuck, stuck. So he's always like, <laughs> so he's like, he's like, because of that experience, <laughs> I like to, I like to make my characters uh, be impaled and suffer in in uncomfortable <laughs> ways that are not glamorous uh-huh. in ways that are not cool uh-huh. in like embarrassing yeah. ways interesting. yeah interesting and he does bash in noses a lot I, I do notice that that must be a thing yeah did maybe man. he got his nose bashed in maybe he did did he get his nose bashed in in Death Stranding <laughs> I don't I don't think so not that I, I remember <laughs> I was just wondering right, if that'd he be is in that game he is in that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a good nose bash in, though. Yeah. That looked awesome. Yeah. I don't remember the nose bash. Which part it, it's that? the the old guy, um, the the millionaire dude who's uh, right after. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, right after she materializes. Right. Uh, he beats him to death. Right. And then later they show him on the ground and his nose is completely caved in. Yeah. So I, I rewatched this like just before here but i missed the last like 30 minutes of it mm. which is all this <laughs> that we yeah that we're about. talking about yeah, like, yeah the, the violence oh but even the violence of the the murder suicide bit uh-huh. oh yeah that couple yeah, yeah that you know, was she's like fucked up remember what he said about the afterlife and us being with our son <laughs> jesus yeah <laughs> oh my god like those his like his gunshots his squibs and, and just the brutality it's Brutal. always like really yeah. visceral. Like yeah, it, it's strong. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. There's there's so much of this. I think movie is just so uh, expertly crafted. I want to say. Yeah. Uh, definitely in the violence and stuff. But like when you said visceral, for some reason <laughs> I'm thinking about like like the shots where Kate Blanchett is like lighting her cigarette with the piece of paper that's on fire. Uh, it just looks really, really good. Or the or the close up where, uh, what's his name, our our main character takes a drink for the first time, yeah, and, ta- and takes the whiskey off the table, like like the whole, yeah, like it's just it's yeah. really big motion. Yeah, they also had crazy yeah. sound in those scenes. Yeah, you know the crystal glass ringing. Do you hear that? No, mm-hmm. I didn't. Yeah, it might be out of your your range of it might, it might be. to hear. <laughs> But when when she was drinking the whiskey and then puts it down and he yeah. picks it up, the crystal of that glass That's so good. has this ringing tone to it that is like a little surreal. Like it, <laughs> it makes you feel like his ear is ringing or something. Yeah, or, you know, it was cool. That's heightened. Awesome. Yeah, heightened reality, heightened senses. That's what yeah. it felt like. Yeah, that's good stuff. Right? Oh, dude, and that goat, that whole ghost scam yeah at the end like like when they were setting that up i was like this is such a bad idea <laughs> yeah. like, this is a bad and idea like there's this meat man over here who's already said he's ready to kill you yeah right and yeah. you're gonna try to fake him with a just a real person yeah you really think he's gonna in? buy that and you really think he's not gonna approach Oof. yeah Oof. and obviously didn't, it doesn't go well didn't go well it goes actually really bad yeah although i like that the, I like that, that the old man there what was it? He had a funny name. I don't remember now. It was from, I was. I made a point. I was going. To, I'm going to remember character names for this episode of the Talkies. <laughs> I never do. But you that guy, uh, he, um, uh, his confession right before that, he he tells the main character, "Hey, uh, I did terrible things. Like I hurt lots of girls, like young girls, and I hurt them bad." And he's like. 
You know, like you could see it in his own eyes. He's like, oh shit. Yeah. And so as soon as soon as the thing goes wrong, he's just like, well, I'm just going to kill him. <laughs> like, I don't feel bad about it. You know, that's exactly what I saw. You know, yeah. Uh, but the cinematography is freaking gorgeous. Yeah. I love yeah. how Guillermo uses all these like sh- extremely centered shots. Yeah. They're just so pretty. They're, uh, yeah, his cinematographer is the same guy who shot Crimson Peak and Shape, Shape of Water. Water. Yeah. This yeah, movie looks, looks like identical it's got a consistent to Shape of Water. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. They ca- they got some pretty cool like days like like when they're in like that like, at like the carny stuff and like some of those like evening stuff yeah. where like the sun's down basically and like there were some cool ass clouds they had. Yeah, dude. It's like they had some cool days that, where they shot. I almost was wondering if it was a sound stage. Yeah, I'm I don't just know. Like, this whole, such I think a they, unique they, look they just got that some good place, weather. You know? That is interesting. Yeah. yeah, I didn't think about that. Uh, I guess there's a lot like of unless they did sky replacement. Super soft light. I wonder if it. Yeah, yeah I wonder if it's front lit. I wonder if they have or butterflies if they behind did a, the camera. Or one of those mm. giant butterfly things. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that looked awesome. The whole carnival set, all top all to it. bottom, was just. I kind of part of me wanted the movie just to stay there. Yeah. I loved all that stuff. No. Yeah. Definitely. That's also another role of that. Uh, what's his name? Willem Dafoe. Um, oh yeah so just, great i'm just like i never knew just i needed to see this good <laughs> that that Will, willem in this role yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I needed to see him add, it to the list. Damn good yeah. add it to the list <laughs> why is he so good casually describing how uh to make a geek yeah <laughs> <laughs> while eating uh off the other guy's plate yeah it's great uh when the geek eats the chicken that was just that was great that was really good i love that he ends up a geek in the end yeah, my only complaint about this movie, and it won't surprise either of you. You predicted it. Was that, that was too obvious. <laughs> it was too obvious. And it was also obvious that he was going to give, what's his name, the the poison uh, alcohol instead of, you know, well, you know it's like a, obvious. It's interesting that, that you're talking about, uh, like, what do you call it? That, premonitions. Predicting. <laughs> Predicting. Um, because... When you think about mentalism and all this stuff in the movie, like the audience is in on all of the spook show stuff. Yeah. Like the whole the whole idea of them doing it, it isn't for the audience at all. Like the audience already knows what's happening and they're in it to see how it goes, basically. Yeah. Like to see the interaction unfold. There's they already know what's happening and it's I'm just drawing That's a true. parallel there. So I'm That's just That's a like, good point. Yeah. And also to give the movie credit I don't think that Guillermo was trying to surprise me with the geek reveal at the end because mm-hmm. he was foreshadowing it. He oh, foreshadowed yeah, it, it very clear. several ways. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that that clearly wasn't his prerogative. So yeah. that doesn't yeah. matter. That's fine. Yeah. yeah but I've it re- still hampers forgiven. your enjoyment. <laughs> Forgiven. <laughs> what doesn't make this movie uh, outstanding? I don't know. I, I think it is outstanding. I, I don't. Yeah. Like, why isn't it as good as Shape of Water? Yeah, if you well, would even agree with that statement. If so, I, I would. Agree. I do agree with it. And my answer, which is just completely to my sensibilities, was some. It, there was sentimentality in it. Oh, okay, right? so it yeah. was still a dark tale. Yeah, but it also was kind of triumphant. Totally, you know. Yeah, and uh, even if it didn't end. It had sort of a cool triumphant ending where you get to decide, oh, did they die or did she really turn into a mermaid yeah. or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but even if it didn't end that way, the movie was permeated with some, like, a playful aspect that I s- pretty much see across the board with Guillermo. He loves mm-hmm. to play with toys. He loves monsters. Sure. He loves fantasy. Yep. And this movie really didn't have any of that except, like, like there, there was, like, this... Well, I guess it's magic, right? Uh Magic is a kind of fantasy. Yeah. But it's a fantasy you know isn't real at the same time. It's like cynical fantasy. Yeah, exactly. It's like an inversion of what he normally does. Yes. He's saying, no, magic is not real. (laughs) Right. Yeah. (laughs) That's funny. But I wouldn't say this movie's worse than Shape of Water for any other reason than just taste. Sure. Yeah. I I feel like he 100... (laughs) Uh, pause for airplane traffic (laughs) sorry windows open (laughs) um i think guillermo 100 achieved exactly what he wanted to achieve yeah so like in that respect 
it's like a flawless movie. He did. Perfect. I think he, he did great. Yeah. Yeah. I think what happened here for me is that, uh, like you were saying, there's no tr- there's no triumph at the end of this one because they're talking about the de- degradation of a character. Yeah. And so you don't have a, a contrast. You have kind of like this guy who starts out kind of a kind of a creep or not a creep, but kind of a crook, I guess. And then ends up kind of a crook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's not, it's not, like, he doesn't learn anything throughout the journey. It's just him getting punished over and over. And he does have some triumphs yeah. in the center. And I think the most emotionally punching part in this movie for me was when he was building up to that, the, the millionaire dude at the end. Yeah. Uh, and where he, and when he killed him, like, that's, that's the end of the movie right there, emotionally for mm-hmm. me. After that, it's just, now you're going to pay for what you did. And it's like, well, yeah, we already kind of, we already kind of knew that he was going to pay for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would agree. It's yeah. kind of like, just kind of like, uh, like, like it didn't surprise me as much as like Shape of Water did, and like I, it was more straightforward than Shape of Water. Like, yeah. like it wasn't as bold, I suppose. It's kind of just a straightforward uh, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did, I mean, but I mean, I was engaged with it, and there, there are like twists and turns oh, and it's, stuff. It's but, magnificent. Yeah, yeah. It's but it's not straightforward. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but Man, there kind of is. It's just being come to expect that from Guillermo. Sure. I think yeah. So, yeah. yeah and I, I remember him actually kind of softening people up for that when they were doing press for this film when it came out. I remember, right, because he was like, there is no, this is my first yeah. movie that's not fantasy. No monsters, yeah. no fantasy, grounded yeah. in reality. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I'm glad that I don't have that history with Guillermo, at least in my mind. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, I've I've seen all, what, two of his movies that I've, that I've, I've come to know, uh, Shape of Water, and uh, I haven't even seen Crimson Peak. What's that other one? Pan's Labyrinth. Um, Pacific Rim, the first one. Yeah. I actually do not really like that movie that much. I like it, but it's in a different way. <laughs> That's a totally different like realm of his mind. You know what's I, weird? That's like a comic book movie. Never yeah. watched it. Probably never will. I just see Power Rangers. I look at that and no, I see Power Rangers. It's absolutely. Actually, what I love about... Okay, completely off really quick <laughs> tangent here. Um, I love the aesthetic of that movie, which is everything in Guillermo's world, right? His, his aesthetics are always amazing. But like... The way that they use two people inside of the robots in uh, the Jaegers or whatever, uh, the lighting effects in there are crazy because it reminds me of, uh, what do you call it? 2001 Space Odyssey. And uh, and what's another movie? The Thing also mm. uh, with these big glass helmets. Yeah. Uh, the way they have them lit Colorful. in there is just, it's so. Reds. Yeah. It's, it's always so cool, cool when, a, when a true art artist filmmaker. Yeah takes on just like a big stupid movie yeah and that's and, exactly and what that's, it is yeah, and, and that's I, what it was yeah. i appreciate that aspect of it yeah but i still just don't really like big stupid movies yeah <laughs> <laughs> taylor's not a fan of big stupid movies <laughs> that's fair that's fair yeah okay okay one little character thing they did that i i really enjoyed was you know for a, a while i'd say the first half of the movie the the character is morally ambiguous yeah right like you know, he's sort of a crook, but all they're a family of crooks, yeah. right? That's what the, the carny people are, right? It's right. What they're they're trying to sort of it's, yeah, it's all cheat about- you, lie to you, fool you, right, and take your money, you know. Um, so you're like, okay, in this world, maybe he's okay, you know, it's all right. But what they 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 slowly reveal throughout the movie the backstory about his dad, and it's not till the very end, yeah. When you see the 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 whole totality of that story, where he whispers, "I hate you," mm-hmm. and opens all the windows and takes the blanket off his dad and sits down and watches him die of hypothermia, mm-hmm. you know, and you're like, "Oh, he was always right. really bad." <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so I went, <laughs> it's interesting because that changed my outlook when I watched the movie for the second time now. Because uh-huh. now I'm going into it. Knowing, yeah, you already knew that. Yeah, knowing yeah. that. And so now it, it kind of changed it to where now he's a uh, everything is much more planned to me. Right. Mm. Yeah. 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 Well, also, you knew that you knew the guy died uh, because he drank the wrong alcohol. Yeah. But what where my mind didn't go initially was it was on purpose. It was on purpose. Right. Right. 
And clearly later you're like, oh no, he wanted that book of knowledge. He poisoned <laughs> that dude. It's interesting because mm-hmm. at that time I, I asked, because Amy was watching this with me and I asked her, uh, I was like, did he give him the, the wood? I thought he gave him the sugar. And Amy said it was ambiguous. And I and I thought back to the scene and I'm like, oh yeah, I guess they cut just before he Yeah, I don't the think model. they wanted you to know. Yeah. But he tells Kate Blanchett's character when, when they do a therapy session, he uh-huh. says, I killed so-and-so. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, they they also draw your attention with Willem's uh, explanation. Yes, <laughs> which I'm like, yeah. why like, explain this one is <laughs> <Yeah>. poison? <laughs> I'm going to put it next to the yeah. one we drink. Yeah, yeah. There's like, a, why there's even a, say that? Uh, yeah. So a little heavy handed writing every yeah. now and then. Uh, I can sure. forgive it. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's um there's something that I don't like in this movie. I don't like is is strong. I don't want to say don't that's like so it. strong. <laughs> <laughs> I just mean like we're being so generous with this film. Yeah, right. All the things we don't like, we're like, well, here's the excuses. <laughs> it's <laughs> anything it's, for Guillermo. It's, yeah, basically, it's because he's so good. It's just it's really weird. Yeah, to, I just really appreciate his work. Yeah, I mean that's all. And yeah. So the the uh, there's <laughs> there's non submersible units in this, movie. <laughs> and they they come and go in ways that I just I don't enjoy. Because his movies have such strong themes, I feel like they need to interweave in between everything that's happening. Yeah. And they kind of do. But then, I mean, so you have the Carney part, and then you have the two years, two years later part. Yeah. His prologue is like about 45 minutes long. It's almost, it is the third of a movie, I guess that makes yeah. sense. But. I, I felt like the movie clearly had two distinct halves. No, yeah. And and in that way, it more resembled an, an epic yeah. Almost more like a traditional biopic. Yeah. Uh-huh. There were mo- it was so biopic that there were times when I was like, is this a real guy? Does right. this guy exist? Because <laughs> yeah. it does feel that way. It really does. Yeah. And usually a filmmaker only indulges in like really drawing out the story that way because you really lose some momentum well, when I, you do that. Yeah, I when you switch connect, over the time jump. Yeah. yeah, I thought they would connect back to the history of what they set up, but they were really just explaining what this character was. And that's what the prologue was all about to me. Like they had the the parts with his dad and everything in the very beginning, but after that it was just this whole Carney thing was about him getting to to learn this ta- this thing that he's going to do the spook show thing that he then carries out for the rest of the movie. It's like they, that could have been that could have been shrunk to maybe ten fifteen minutes. Yeah, and I would have liked that better. I think because it because the theme would have would have played out stronger. Everything yeah, it definitely had like an unorthodox structure. Yeah, yeah. it didn't bother me per se yeah. um but yeah it wasn't it, it See, felt, that's what i want to say a little weird that's what i want to say it's strong to say that i disliked it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 uh, it was something i noticed i'll say that yeah it was yeah it's like guillermo's like sacred territory and we're it's like if ari aster made a movie that we weren't crazy about mm, that can't happen <laughs> I, I feel that way too i don't think <laughs> it i can was gonna say movie. i was gonna say actually what you were just describing about the character and this feeling like a biopic like his next movie is is kind of supposed to be like that. It's uh, like Ari's. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be like a character piece about this one, like dude. a whole like lifetime, like, like literally like decade span yeah. oh, is wow. what I've heard. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Of a fictional, I'm so entrepreneurial type. I'm so yeah, ready. we're all excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> is he shooting that right now or what? I know he has a title. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's awesome is that we we reviewed his first movie and his second movie. And, and as long as we no, never give up on the talkies, we could cover all of Ari Aster's <laughs> they come filmography. Out. <laughs> yeah. When will he stop making movies? I don't know. Let's see who dies first. <laughs> <laughs> He'll stop making movies when we stop doing talkies. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. He'll know. He'll know. Yeah. yeah. When we put like, the microphones oh, they've down. They've stopped. <laughs> they've stopped i can't i can't continue, guys. I have to continue we got in on the ground floor <laughs> yeah so he, he has this conversation once a month when he sees three weeks go by and he's like did they stop <laughs> <laughs> we did by the way get in on the ground floor we almost contacted him through his his website that he still had up yeah squarespace squares, yeah squarespace website squarespace yeah. dot air ari no ariaster dot squarespace dot com so yeah something was, like that it was hilarious it was so film student yeah. looking it was so cool and it was gone within like two days of uh hereditary becoming a hit yeah because hereditary was just <laughs> yeah. a monster yeah movie. yeah <laughs> that was such a sleeper like out of nowhere just all of a sudden we're watching like the best horror movie ever <laughs> right? yeah from some random ass yeah, dude like, hey, that <laughs> looks like a cool trailer yeah from someone who never heard of let's give it a shot 
<laughs> like, I don't know if I'll ever have that experience again. That's a rare cinema yeah. experience. Quite, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's like once a decade. Yeah, I'm trying deal. to think of if there was. I don't. I can't think. What I've been taken, been taken, like, just swept off my feet. Yeah. By someone that I had just debut, no yeah. expectation of. Yeah. Right. Just oh, zero. Yeah. Freaking Ryan Johnson. <laughs> well, I mean, it's episode I, eight. You I, know. I, I mean, it's Star Wars hour. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, <laughs> Looper's kind of kind of cool. <laughs> Looper's cool. I yeah. like Looper. Looper's. I hear Brick is great. I hear Brick I've is never great too. I've never it. seen it. Either. We should cover Brick. <laughs> we Knives should out cover is Brick. Good. Knives oh, out Knives, Knives Out is great. great. It's a great movie. Yeah. I can't wait to see the. Four hundred million dollar uh, Knives Out sequel <laughs> from sequel? Netflix. Jesus, yeah, that's so ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Netflix. I mean, is, he, Netflix is he directing it? it? Yeah, yeah, he made like the biggest fucking it's deal, the biggest ever. deal of okay. all time for for movies. Good, yeah. I'm glad that he's directing it. Though. And it's like yeah. a movie that utterly is oh, just doesn't completely need to exist, unnecessary yeah. for sequels. But that's that's yeah. what Netflix is about. Yeah. Yay, <laughs> yay, yay! Netflix throws money at things that are Hooray unnecessary. Hooray for the world we live in! Oh, yay! <laughs> oh, and, yay! and <laughs> oh, yay! <laughs> uh, and to go back to Star Wars Hour, please, oh, please, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, to, yeah. Can we get back to Guillermo? Let's something? get back no, to no, Star no, Wars. No, yeah, yeah. No, 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 okay, no. Okay, okay. No, no, what if that, Guillermo that. makes a Star Wars movie? No. Oh, what if Guillermo makes a Bioshock movie. That's what. Oh, we want that's that is uh, that's essential. We want, yeah. Actually, that's he's the only person who should direct a hey, Bioshock movie. More tangents. He was going to say Star Wars. No, Netflix <laughs> is making a Bioshock movie. Is Guillermo del Toro? No. Dir- Fuck. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, that one's. Well, I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> anyway, you were saying. About I just Star Wars. wanted to say that. <laughs> I wanted to say that Star Wars Episode Eight is it transcends uh, good and bad. Oh. It is impossible to be black and white with that movie. It and depends it, on where you're it, going from. It occupies an isolated uh, piece of s- the cinematic universe of all cinema of all time. <laughs> it occupies it its a unique category little niche by itself where it's neither good or bad. Uh, it just exists. So it joins isolated uh, of all movies. Human Centipede as movies that have their own category. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> human Centipede, yeah. And yeah. episode 8. That's the and mouth episode anus eight, yeah. category. Mouth anus genre. <laughs> Oh wait! I, th- I was thought I, was, I might have thought of another mouth anus movie. <laughs> well, we definitely need to hear about it. Definitely. I was gonna say, uh, what's that movie? A hundred and twenty days of Sodom. <laughs> Sodom? I, I haven't seen that one. <laughs> oh right. no, that would know. probably fit right in there. Well, let's cover it next week on Talkies. Yeah. Uh, back to Guillermo. Who? Uh, oh, he directed the movie we watched. Oh, uh, Guillermo what's del Toro. That? that guy. Nightmare Alley. And what one? Shut up. <laughs> he this could, should have been called Spook Show. Spook Show. <laughs> That's such a dumb. That name. would have been stupid. Yeah, Spook stupid. Show. I, I would have saw it and been like, no, I don't want to watch that. Right. <laughs> the new film from Guillermo del Toro, Spook Show. <laughs> well, did you catch the reference to the title? I did. When he said it when Willem uh, just like yeah. glossed over it. Yeah, when he's talking the about Nightmare Alley, where you get where you find geeks. <laughs> That's that's from the log house. Oh, uh, sorry. What do you say? <laughs> He's he was talking about where you go to find a potential new geek. You go to and Nightmare he said Alley. The railroad tracks, the slums, Nightmare Alley. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. You go and down then, this alley. It's a nightmare down there. Yeah. No, there's literally. And then he a looks sign. at the camera. There's like a sign. It's like this is oh, Nightmare yeah. Alley. Nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, and then he <laughs> looks at the camera. My point <laughs> is I was trying to get to is that I listened to Guillermo del Toro's Oscar acceptance speech. Oh, that's the best one. Like once a year oh, yeah. as just a hype me up as a filmmaker. Yeah. No, that's it, a great speech. So that's the best Oscar speech ever. ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah ever. it's good. It's really good. And it, it, it just it makes me so hyped to make movies every time I hear that. So that's that's why I will always like be respectful to Guillermo <laughs> del Toro. I'm like, no, you know what? Even if this movie sucked, Guillermo gets it. All right, yeah, this, Guillermo gets it. This is a man who truly loves cinema. Yeah, see, and really does get it. See, yeah. but but in a way, I'm gonna go there. Uh-huh. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, also kind of gets it. Half of him does. <laughs> I'm gonna give. You, I, I don't know if he's always genuine. 
I think M Night Shyamalan. He's not genuine. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I think he. I think he betrays himself sometimes. I know. I think he does, and I have a whole theory behind it. Dude, Dude. I'm not going to talk about it because okay. this is not M Night Shyamalan. <laughs> that's hour. for the next uh, next Shyamalan movie. Yeah, that whatever out. that's going to be. Yeah. If ever, maybe he's done. Maybe he's dead I now. Say maybe he's dead. <laughs> maybe he's dead now. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't want he's, that. What he's happens making... when he gets old? Oh, he'll hate himself. Oh. <laughs> he will hate himself if he gets old. Oh, no. He hates old people. Oh, Maybe no. he'll start making good movies in his old age. <laughs> when he's old. Yeah. <laughs> he hates old people and people with mental disabilities. Wow. Yeah. What, what if he bitch. has a mental disability? Yeah. And he's just and projecting. He's, he's Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He uses old people and people with dementia and autism as fright elements yeah. all the time he does yeah he does <laughs> that's his thing so like i mean that's it's a little cringy <laughs> a little weird i think it's awesome cool cool good for you hey congrats i hate old people <laughs> <laughs> guess what uh, you are a baby old person you're the oldest young person that i know you're the oldest Shit. young person i know i've started to get old yeah yeah, so you've been getting old since you were born. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I've been like I've I've been not aging. I only started aging last year. Really? Wow. Yeah. Well, what made you decide to do that? I did a a float spa. Uh huh. Oh, damn. <laughs> I had a I transcendental love... uh, experience. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I need to age. Now I yeah. need to age. Dude, a float spa will change you. Yeah. And you come out a different person. That's how I switched to non-binary. <laughs> It was a float spa. It was I got a float spa. I got so in. Are a, you quantum? I'm, I got in a male, and I you I got came, in a male. <laughs> I was a male. Oh, <laughs> when I got in, I have been oh. in a male, but that's a different oh. story. <laughs> I'm inside um, of a male. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was saying the salt water in the spa. It it took away right. the gender identity the sodium it just washes it yeah. the sodium <laughs> soaks in so and it, 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 it yep. absorbs the te- testosterone yes and, and it gives you like estrogen no 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 see that's sex we're talking about oh, gender. I'm sorry oh gender. you're right oh my bad that's you. sex my bad you're yes right. oh wow yeah <laughs> now you know so no, your okay. personal identity changed yes from the float spot from the foot was it the salt <laughs> probably I, that's my working theory <laughs> is that it was the salt it also cured covid Really? Wow. Yeah. That's, and now that's this great. podcast you, will be pulled <laughs> from <laughs> iTunes. Yeah. That's it. COVID, it may, the, the, may have COVID misinformation. Yeah. <laughs> now we contain COVID misinformation. Oh, my God. Damn Disclaimer. It. COVID is not cured by salt. <laughs> <laughs> Except for when it is. Oh, maybe it is. Has, any, has anyone actually tried it, though? I'm just asking questions. I'm just, just asking questions. Just asking questions. Has anyone ever tried to cure COVID with salt? I've done my own research. Yeah? Yeah. I have too. <laughs> uh, me too. <laughs> I've done, I did someone else's I've research. Only, I've only done other people's research. <laughs> yeah, I do other people's research. Yeah. What more can we say about Nightmare Alley? Probably something. There's probably something. <laughs> uh, d- d- uh, all the sets and locations were freaking incredible yep. and i want to know what were all these amazing art deco spaces they kept shooting in yeah mostly i bet a lot of them are sets huh? i really want to see how they lit the outside parts though the outside stuff yeah because that shit was stuff. well that fucking was lit yeah. yeah you know what lighting i really liked was in the the snowy garden area where the guy had mm, his, oh yeah his vision mm-hmm. there yeah like that looked crazy yeah that looked really good yeah I like that. Damn. Damn. I like, I like it. Hey, Guillermo, if you're listening, how did you like this? <laughs> Just put your answer in the comments. Wait, Guillermo is his DP? Huh? Guillermo is well, his own DP. Well, he was directing. Oh. I mean, he would have had some input. You're right. You're right. You know? You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Lighting was great. I'm fucking sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Bow your head. Thank you. All right. Bow. Uh, submission, please. Submit. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I guess I'm oh, running out. Pizza? Yeah, let's do it. Pizza? What are you talking about? I'm hungry. What? Oh, you're hungry. If this movie could be compared to a metaphorical pizza, how would you do that? That's a weird question. I don't care. 
Answer it. Okay. We're all kind of high now, so. <laughs> Fucking answer. Answer the question, D. Oh, my God. Okay. Answer the goddamn I, question, I D. I, I don't know. If Nightmare Alley were a pizza, what kind of pizza would it be? It's not a hard question. Well, you know what's weird is that answer. I always want to go, like, kind of crazy with these. Yeah. You know, metaphor metaphorical pizzas to make them yeah. exactly the experience that I had. Yeah. But, like, this is what it is. Okay. Okay. That's what it is. Pizza. Okay. Mm-hmm. Think of your pepperoni pizza. Mm-hmm. It's got cut pepperonis. Mm-hmm. Crispy edges. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Mm-hmm. It's got uh, red pepper flakes. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. You know? And you've got the cheese right there on the side if you want to, you know, add it if you'd like. Mm-hmm. Okay. It sounds, this sounds good. It's great. It sounds yeah. delicious. Actually. Wow. It sounds that's like a great experience. That's what it is. Wow. See? Wow. That's a good one. Yeah. That's almost exactly mine. <laughs> <laughs> maybe exactly well i'm gonna just, i'm gonna go then so you can yeah let me you can think, think about, about that, that for a second yeah we just don't we don't want three identical pizzas honestly so, though it's but, just but a if go, the movie was that pizza. then shouldn't it be that no <laughs> we make these pizza ratings for entertainment <laughs> this is where the show begins Taylor. <laughs> well i take it i do not do it for entertainment this is a metric <laughs> this is a, for me. This is work. This yeah, is serious but shit. But the entertainment aspect of it is factored into the algorithm. That's a part of it. That's a part mm. of the metric. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I don't your know what you're going off of. I'm just. I'm just going by the numbers, man. <laughs> I'm just going by the numbers. <laughs> all right. All right. Go. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, to me, the pizza uh, that best represents Nightmare Alley would be a delicious pepperoni pizza with cupped uh, pepperonis oh, yeah. with a little well, grease inside, you know, yeah, those yeah. crispy edges and wow, red yeah. pepper flakes and Parmesan on the side. That probably cooked, side, in, probably side, cooked yeah. in like a brick oven. Oh, yeah. Oh, great. Know? Yeah. Right? Wow, that sounds great. Delicious. Wait. Oh, yeah. Wait. Oh. No, no, no. Okay. I'm leaving. <laughs> the red pepper flakes are spicier than you're used to. Okay. Oh. And even though it was delicious, it kind of burns your mouth a bit. Oh. And all you had was room temperature soda. So you're like, ooh, ouch, 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 right? And so you're like, that was amazing pizza, but not what I was expecting. Mm. Can't quite say it's the best pizza ever, but it, I definitely like respect it. Mm. Yeah, and now I need like milk or something mm. to cool off my mouth. Really? That's a that's a experience right there. Yeah. That sounds like so perfectly experience well, still D, sounds like I delicious. take this seriously. Still tastes pretty <laughs> you know? good. I'm good at this. Yes. I'm good at what I do. It's good. I do it well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't do it at all. <laughs> now, Taylor, beat it. <laughs> it's your turn beat to it? beat it. Yeah, we're trying to one up each other. <laughs> beat it. Beat it. Just beat it. All right. Fine. Um, I think Sounds this good. is. Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> Can do. I'll do that right now. Right. Um, <laughs> macaroni in a pot. <laughs> That's, That's a, a weird pizza. pizza. I don't like, like that. That's not a good pizza. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is definitely a a pizza with. Cup pepperonis. Whoa. Wait, wait a second. Red pepper Dude. flakes. Wait a second. Cup pepperonis? Dude, Fair Oaks is running out of cup pepperonis <laughs> tonight. We, we, we're just using them all. But the, the, the real star of the show uh-huh. here, it's even it's not even the cup pepperonis. Like uh-huh. cup pepperonis, obviously they're great. Uh-huh. Yeah. Obviously. Of course. Obviously. obviously they're great. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> and, but the real star of the show is um House made Parmesan. Oh, sorry. House made uh, mozzarella. Oh, is on there. So like the, in the water, like the whole mm-hmm. real. Ooh. Yeah, in house fresh mozzarella mm. finished that day on the pizza, mm-hmm. and that's really like it shines through. That cheese is some fresh ass cheese. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't. That like. is some fresh <laughs> ass cheese. I don't want to, want to think about <laughs> ass cheese. <laughs> okay. And it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. Lovely. And well, you just awesome. want to eat it. <laughs> yes, I do. I really do. And um, and so it's delicious. But you know what? It's pretty straightforward. You know, it's uh-huh. nothing. Uh, you you know, you've had it before. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. You know, it's you're just like, oh, that's it's, a good pizza. That's a damn good pizza. You know, right. it's not it's not uh, groundbreaking. Sure, but it doesn't sure. need to be. But it's it's that's much better than point. most pizzas. Yeah. 
and it's better than most pizzas. Yeah. yeah. It's not groundbreaking. It doesn't need to be, and it's better than most pizzas. Exactly. It's okay for a pizza to not be groundbreaking. Exactly. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. It's That's still delicious. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. You can have an amazing pizza that is not groundbreaking. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what wow. we have on our hands here. I feel like we really broke some ground today. Okay. Yeah. Hold on a second. <laughs> I just got to bring this up. Please. We talked about The Green Knight in a similar way. Did Fuck we? The Green Knight. I but hate exactly that movie. What I'm saying. This movie is way better this than The Green Knight. This movie is way better, way than, better than, than The Green Knight. Knight. Yeah. Green Knight was just kind of boring. Yeah. But I'll but just be honest. Our episode if you oh, want to talk sorry. about that. Yeah. Okay. You know what's I'll funny is like. Yeah, yeah, we'll go to, I'll go to our episode. We, we, gave, we gave Spy Kids 3D <laughs> better pizza ratings than a lot of really good movies. Well, you know just what? saying. <laughs> to be honest, I kind of had more fun watching Spy Kids 3D Game Over than I did The Green Knight. The yeah. Matrix Revolutions? Oh, way yeah. Way more, way fun, more than fun than Matrix, Matrix Revolutions. Revolutions. Matrix and Revolutions or Green Knight? Uh, Green Knight. I don't like thinking about that <laughs> at all. <laughs> Marvel movie or, yeah. Okay, anyway. I guess Green Knight. Green Knight no, or High like Life. It. Yeah. Green Knight. Green Knight. Green Knight or Ad Astra. Ad Astra. Ooh, Green, yeah, Knight. Ad Astra. Green Knight. Green Knight. Ad Astra. I would, I'd still go I think they're in the same exact yeah, yeah, vein. The same. Yeah, they are the yeah. same. I, just, yeah. I, I side with Ad Astra because it's space. Some awesome sure, indie fair. movies that are not that good. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that. Exactly. Exactly yeah. that. I get. I just get too hyped by the A24 brand. I know. Yeah. A24, you know, here we go. Honestly, yeah. they, they don't always hit. Not all of them do. Oh, no. yeah. shit. We didn't talk about Licorice Pizza yet. Damn. Oh, I still haven't God. seen it. Yeah, we got to watch that. Bad. When you, I want to watch that with you. I'd love Whenever to. You watch that. Let's yeah. make it a date. Yeah, let's do I it. I don't want to watch it with that. either right. of you. Well, we don't you want bitch. you with us. You son of a bitch. <laughs> what you going to do? You son of a bitch. Anyway. Has this been the talkies? No. Oh. <laughs> what? This. What was this? This has been the talkies. Oh, okay. And y- oh, you've see. been listening to it. Hey, thanks for listening to the talkies, where three filmmakers talk about movies and a whole lot intro. of <laughs> random stuff, apparently. Yeah, we don't really talk <laughs> and, about movies. And yet. again, this is nothing new <laughs> for the talkies. <laughs> I don't know, I felt a little more extreme today than usual. Yeah. No, so. yeah, this has been a this yeah. has been a hot one. Yeah, yeah we uh, had to unwind. At least yeah, they heard it, it here. out. Yeah. They heard it here first. We though. we needed a release. Yeah. Yeah. You heard like, it here first. You did. You did. This is the first place you hear this. This is the that's first true. place. Yeah. yeah, no one else has done you're this. You're not going to hear this anywhere else. I'm pretty confident that's true. And actually. you're not going to hear this anywhere else, and you're going to hear it here first. That's, that's <laughs> not not an exaggeration. Yeah, you are correct. Yeah, uh, this is unique content. <laughs> yes, unique yeah. original content so, so, right here. So tune in for more unique original content. Uh, every whenever the hell we put out an episode, sounds good. Just all ring the, the places. bell, you'll get notified. You know all the places. Sometimes, I mean, I mean, we're not on like TikTok or Instagram. <laughs> all the places, but not those. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but but most places. Anywhere. I mean, there's not podcasts on TikTok. You know? Any podcast place and YouTube. Are there? Are yeah, there podcasts on TikTok? Yeah, some people they break them up and they put them on TikTok. Uh, but do. that's not real. That's it's not fake. real. It's that's fake. not real. That's it's not even fucking real. made up. Yeah, yeah. that's made up. That's We've a, done that before. That's a hot pocket that's right there. In the past. That's, that's a, we did. That's fake. a hot pocket. That is a hot pocket. Yeah. What movie's a hot pocket? Pizza rolls. Freaking. Uh, what do you call it? It's 3D. <laughs> but yeah, all right. that was a hot pocket. Yeah, you're right. And a yeah, pop tart. We did say that. Is a gay hot pocket. Is a gay hot pocket. <laughs> that was Maddie. Oh said. yeah, that was brilliant. <laughs> that was brilliant. Uh, okay, okay, bye, bye. Fuck off. <laughs>